Hi everyone, this is Henry from Emerson. Today I'm going to talk you through the workflow of the automated ground control points, or GCPs, that we use with Capture and our processing. GCPs can help increase the accuracy of your data, reduce drift, and also position it in the real world. Today I'm going to go through the workflow with the uh, underside of this bridge here, so we can go through the capture and the processing to geo-reference this data correctly in the real world. So Emerson processing software uses circular retro-reflective targets when running the automated GCP function. Uh, we use 3M diamond grade material and it's important that you have that sort of high reflectivity when the software is searching for the targets in its algorithm. The size of the target is important. This one I've got here today is a 250 millimeter diameter target. You can go down to 150 millimeters when using walking or backpack scans. However, I'd recommend a larger target if you're doing something like a drone scan because the amount of points that you get on the target is important when we process the starter in Aura. Now the spacing of the targets along your capture is important. Ideally we want to have a ground control point every 40 metres or so to ensure that you don't accumulate too much drift within your scan. It's important to note also in feature rich environments you could possibly space them a bit further apart and in feature poor or feature less environments it could be good to have them closely spaced together. Now when placing your GCPs, the orientation of them is important. These have a much better reflectivity within zero to 30 degrees of the normal from the target. So for something like a drone scan, placing them horizontally on the ground is perfect because you'll be observing it from above. For a walking or a vehicle scan on a car, uh, it's better to place them sort of perpendicular to your direction of travel. So that will give you a higher chance of getting high reflectivity or high intensity points. The other benefit to it is the target itself has a larger footprint when it's perpendicular to the view that you're capturing from. So you get more points on the target when it's orientated like this in relation to the scanner as opposed to having a lower um, incidence angle like we have now. So in today's situation I want to scan the underside of this bridge here. And to make sure I capture this data accurately, I'm going to put two targets on this side of the bridge, two targets on the far side of the bridge, survey them in with GPS, and then I'm going to capture a continuous scan that captures all of these targets, as well as the bridge. So everything's going to be geo-referenced in location to those targets that I've geo-referenced with RTK. Okay, so we've now placed our four targets around this project here and I've spaced them evenly on the extent of the project. That's going to make sure everything within inside these targets is going to be accurately geo-referenced. I've used four targets, you need to use a minimum of three for the GCPs, but any more that you use are going to give you more accuracy and also more redundancy in your measurements. Now when you measure these in, you want to make sure you stay at least 1.5 metres away from the target. So our exclusion zone by default is 1.5 metres. So if you're scanning the target from here, you're actually going to get no points on the target whatsoever. So make sure you stay back a bit further and spend a bit more time around the targets as well. This gives our algorithm a higher chance of finding those high intensity points that we're going to measure. I also like to point the hover map at the target. So we get three times as many points out the front of the target, uh, out the front of the hover map, sorry, as opposed to the sides. And you can also rotate around the target so you capture it from a few different angles. This is going to give you a lot of points to work with uh, in our algorithm, a really good chance of finding these targets when we process the data and that's going to give you the best chance of accurate output. I'm also an advocate of spending a little bit more time in the field to ensure that your data is correct. This many many times will save you more time overall if you spend another five percent of time capturing the data correctly as opposed to trying to tweak the data afterwards with the processing settings. So what I'm going to do now is quickly survey in these targets and then process some data.
Okay, so here we're back at the start location. We've captured all of the targets, the pipes, we've closed the loop. Now I'm gonna stop the scan and we're gonna go back to the office and process this data. Okay, so we've now finished our scanning. Uh, we've come back to the office and I've downloaded the raw files from the hover map and also the uh, CSV file from the RTK data of the GCPs that I captured. If I open this, um, the only information that I really want out of here is the name, eastern, northern, and elevation of each of the GCPs that I measured. So it's these four ones here, eastern, northern, elevation. I'm gonna copy them and paste them in a new worksheet just to tidy this information up a little bit. Um, we need all of this information as well as the radius of the targets. So the format that we want is the label or name of the target, eastern, northern, height, and then also the radius of the target. So make sure you put the radius and not the diameter, and it's measured in meters. So my targets today were 250 millimeters, uh, so I'm using 0.125 meters as the radius. Now what I'm gonna do is save that. I'm gonna call this GCP coordinates. And you also wanna make sure that it's saved as a comma delimited CSV. Uh, there are a few different types of CSVs. Um, this is also one for Macintosh and MS-DOS, but just make sure you save it as the standard CSV comma delimited. Save that, and just to double check, I'm gonna open up this file I've just saved it as, and here we have, so, the name, eastern, northern, height, and radius in meters. I wanna make sure I've got this um, CSV file closed when I try and process the data in Aura. If I leave this open, it's, it's gonna be an issue when we try and read these files into Aura. So I'll make sure I'll close it. Okay, so now we're in Aura and I'm gonna click on process and then process scan and I'm gonna select the GCP option. So I'm gonna click on add GCP data and navigate to add scan and scan data, sorry. And that's where I select the scan that we captured today and I'm going to then select the CSV file that I want to use. So I'll click on import CSV data and click on this GCP coordinates, which I've saved. And then we get the um, a table of what data it's going to read in. So the ID or label, X coordinate, Y coordinate, Z coordinate, and then the radius. So everything here looks good. I'm going to click on save. So here we have the processing settings. Um, you can see the exclusion zone by default is a spherical exclusion zone and the radius is set to 1.5 meters. This is why if we stand too close to a target, we actually don't get any points on it. They're all excluded and not used. I'm gonna click on the GCP tab and here it stipulates um, exactly what the algorithm is looking for when it's looking for a GCP. So by default, it's looking for points with intensity between 250 and 255. So that's the very upper end of the spectrum. We'll only get very reflective targets at this sort of level of intensity. Uh, and to be t detected as a target, there needs to be at least 50 points. The target thickness is um, essentially the, the noise, the kind of thickness of the cluster of points that it's looking for. So by default we use 20 millimeters uh, in the target standard deviation. This is the standard deviation or the accuracy of the point or coordinate that we're putting into this algorithm. So by default this is set to, this is 3.1 millimeters which is um, I guess acceptable for total station measurements but I know today uh, me using RTK my data is not that accurate. So what I'll do if I'm using RTK, I'll use something like 20 millimeters and that allows um, a little bit more room for SLAM to fit into your observations. It doesn't hold those targets as strictly as um, say if it was a total station pickup and those targets were accurate to three millimeters, then I would leave it as it was. But I know 
these ones weren't accurate to three millimeters so I've increased that to 20 millimeters so I'm going to click on save I'm going to rename this output GCP and then I'm going to click on start and we're going to start processing the data now it's going to process through to about 45 percent and then it's going to prompt uh, for me to review the constellation for me to double check that the GCPs are aligned correctly with the targets that have been identified by our algorithm. So I'll speed up this part of the video, um, but I'll see you once we get to that next step in the, in the GCP processing. Okay, so here we've got to the halfway point. Uh, it's prompting for me to load the constellation, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, it's gonna load in the point cloud and the constellation so I can verify that it's lined up the correct targets with the correct coordinates that we've put in there. Okay, so here we've loaded in the um, constellation file and also the point cloud. If I zoom in, you can see it's already lined up the physical targets. If I zoom in, you'll see these high intensity circular points in the point cloud. Um, this green box around it identifies that um, Aura has found that as a target. And this dotted green line means that it's associated that physical target with GCP number three. So it's saying target four's number is GCP number four, and these two over here, are GCP one and two. So one and two. Now it's found this correctly the first time because there's only one way that it can line up all of these targets to fit um, both the, the point cloud and the coordinates of those targets. There's only one way that it can fit together. But if for some reason it was done incorrectly, uh, I could swap these and let's say swap the targets around for example um, just by dragging them into the other box uh, target zero is GCP one and uh, if for some reason Aura didn't identify your target you can always try and um, select the target by either using the selection box or drawing a polygon around it and then clicking on add target and that will give it another go at um, trying to identify these kind of high intensity circular points if they you know meet the, the correct requirements in terms of the intensity of them and also the number of points within a certain radius uh, it will create another target here that you can then drag into your constellation So once I've got all this lined up and it looks good, I'm happy with it how it is. Uh, I can save the constellation up here, quick save. And then I can also confirm to continue processing this data. And what it's then gonna do is um, finish, off, finish off processing the data and also use a non-rigid transformation to make sure that those targets that have been identified line up with the coordinates that I've put in the CSV file. Okay, the scan's now finished processing. Uh, I can load in, let's say, the subsample point cloud and also the trajectory. And I'm also gonna open the folder and have a look at the um, accuracy analysis report. So I'll go to the output folder, open this ground control accuracy analysis. And inside there we can see uh, the GCP, the coordinate in terms of X, Y, Z, and also the distance error. So this is the final distance between the SLAM solution and the coordinate that we used as the input. So as you can see, 3 millimeters, 8 millimeters, 8 millimeters, and 25 mils for GCP number 4, um, all within scope of what I'd expect to see using uh, you know, RTK GPS for these observations. So if we have a quick look at the output, I'll just change the um, the viewing of this the scale to intensity and you can clearly see where those targets are so they stand out very nicely um, and this is kind of the view that Aura sees in its automated algorithm when it's looking for targets it's actually just looking for points with super high intensity and it's looking for these sort of circular um, clusters of points so you can see them very clearly you can see how I've captured kind of going around the outside and keeping enough distance from the target itself 
Uh, up here on the other side of the bridge, you can see it's another target there. And this one was a bit more difficult because there were trees surrounding it. Uh, but I've also observed it from a couple of different angles to make sure I get you know, a good chance of seeing that target from multiple locations and to get enough points on it is the key thing. So the most common things that I see in terms of issues that customers have with the GCP workflow, often it comes down to the CSV file itself. So making sure you've got your attributes in the right column. So the first column being the label or the name, second column being your Easting, third column Northern, fourth column is the height, and then your final column needs to be the radius of the target. It's important you put the radius, and this is measured in meters, and not the diameter. If you put in the diameter, it's gonna be looking for a much larger target. So make sure you put them in correctly. Um, also, we need to have a decimal point between where meters turn into decimal meters. Um, some countries by default will have a, a comma in this location and that can cause issues. So just make sure that you use a decimal point in that location. Make sure you save the CSV file before you try and import it into Aura. And then some of the final settings you can also change in Aura. So I'm just going to go to the processing settings now. And if you can't see your targets when you kind of filter by intensity, then you need to reduce the intensity that it's looking for. So by default, we look for intensity between 250 and 255. If your targets are maybe dirty or old or um, possibly you didn't observe them from the ideal angle or maybe from a further distance, you could reduce this intensity. So let's say you didn't observe them in the first time that you run the GCP algorithm, you could reduce that intensity to say 200. The next thing you can change is the number of points that it's looking for. So by default, it's looking for 50 points within that um, target, the, the area that it's searching for, the radius. If you measure your target from either a further distance or the target is smaller, or if you didn't measure it for very long, if you didn't spend much time near the target, then it could be beneficial to reduce this number. Instead of looking for a cluster of 50 points, maybe you could change it so it's only looking for 20 points, for example. The downside of this is you're gonna get more false negatives. So it's gonna find other clusters of high intensity points um, and flag them as a target, but it can be beneficial in some situations. The next one is the target thickness. So by default, we use a two centimeter uh, cluster of high intensity points that we're looking for. If you have a slightly noisier point cloud for whatever reason, it could be due to the angle that you're measuring the target, it could be due to the distance, it could be due to many different things. So if you want to, you can increase that to have a slightly better chance of finding a thicker target. It's gonna give you a larger envelope to search for your target. You know, if you use say three centimeters instead of two. And then the final setting here is your target standard deviation. That's not really gonna help you find the target, but it's more related to the accuracy uh, of the measurements that you've done of those targets. So I typically use about two centimeters when I capture the targets with RTK GPS. Uh, if I use a total station, I'll do something more like three millimeters. So it really depends on how you've captured the data um, and the surveyor or the person who's captured it is the best one to make that decision of how much weight they wanna put into the accuracy of their survey over the SLAM solution that we solve. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you wanna learn more, please check out our website. Thanks again, bye.